Welcome to the web tutorial using NSOC, part one, files. First, let's go over what you can expect to learn. We will start with an overview of NSOC one through three cross-sectional files. Next, we will cover NSOC three longitudinal files. Finally, we will discuss NSOC three time diary files. A separate tutorial describes the process for registering and applying for sensitive files, including NSOC files. Let's start with information about NSOC 1 through 3 cross sectional files, which include information about current caregivers. Each round, the NSOC cross sectional data are organized into three files two tracker files, one for SPs or sample persons, and the other for OPs or other persons, and the cross sectional NSOC file. Let's review each of these files in more detail. The NSOC cross-sectional SP tracker file provides information about NSOC eligibility at the SP level. The file includes one record for each SP in the current round of NHATS. For NSOC 1 and 2, living SPs with NSOC eligible helpers were eligible. For NSOC 3, both living and deceased SPs with eligible helpers were eligible. The file includes SP level variables such as whether the SP is NSOC eligible, account of NSOC eligible helpers, and account of the subset who completed NSOC. Each record also includes a unique identifier, the SPID. The NSOC cross-sectional OP tracker file provides information about NSOC eligibility at the OP level. The file includes one record for each person in the NHATS OP file in the current round of NHATS. The NHATS OP file has a record for each other person mentioned during the NHATS interview, including NSOC eligible helpers. Each round, the NSOC OP tracker file includes a variable that combines information about eligibility for NSOC and the outcome of the interview. NSOC 3 includes several additional variables summarizing the OP's eligibility, outcome for NSOC, and whether the SP was living or deceased. Each record in the file has two identifiers the SPID and the OPID. The data from interviews with current caregivers are included in the NSOC cross-sectional file. The file includes one record for each caregiver who responded to NSOC. We have found that about 60 to 65% of eligible SPs have one responding NSOC helper, 25 to 30% have two, and about 10% have three or more. The file includes responses to the NSOC interview. For spouses that were routed around some questions, derived variables are provided that combine information from NHATS with NSOC. Each record also includes a set of cross-sectional weights, sample variables, and two identifiers, the SPID and the OPID. Next, let's explore NSOC 3 longitudinal files. In the third round of NSOC, a longitudinal design was introduced in which caregivers who participated in NSOC 2 were re-interviewed. NSOC 3 longitudinal data are organized into three files, two tracker files, one for the SP and one for the OP, and the NSOC longitudinal file. Let's review each of these files. The longitudinal NSOC SP tracker file includes all persons with a sample person interview in the last year of NSOC. The file is similar to the NSOC cross-sectional SP tracker file in that it identifies each NHATS SP who had a caregiver eligible for the longitudinal component of NSOC, and provides a count of eligible helpers, the subset who completed the longitudinal component of NSOC, and the SPID identifier. The longitudinal NSOC OP tracker file identifies caregivers in the previous round of NSOC who are eligible for follow-up. The variables on the file are similar to those on the NSOC cross-sectional OP tracker file. The file includes a variable that combines information about eligibility for NSOC and the outcome of the interview, and several additional variables summarizing the OP's eligibility, outcome for NSOC, whether the SP was living or deceased, and two identifiers, the SPID and the OPID. The data from interviews with continuing caregivers are included in the NSOC longitudinal file. The file includes one record for each caregiver who responded to NSOC. We have found about 70% of eligible SPs have one responding NSOC helper, 25% have two, and about 5% have three or more. 
The file includes responses to the NSOC interview. For spouses that were routed around some questions, derived variables are provided that combine information from NHATS with NSOC. Each record also includes a set of longitudinal weights, sample variables, and two identifiers, the SPID and the OPID. Next, let's review the NSOC 3 time diary files. In the third round of NSOC, a yesterday time diary interview was administered after the NSOC interview. The interview asks caregivers to report about activities occurring over the previous day. There are two files associated with the time diary interview, the time diary summary file and the time diary activity file. The time diary summary file includes one record for each completed diary interview. Both cross-sectional and longitudinal sample caregivers are included in one file. The file includes summary information about the diary day and provides weights and sample variables for analyses at the diary day level. Two identifiers, the SPID and the OPID, are also included. The time diary activity file includes one record for each activity mentioned in the completed diary interview. Like the summary file, the activity file includes both cross-sectional and longitudinal sample caregivers. The file includes detailed information about each activity as well as a set of weights and sample variables. Three identifiers are also included, the SPID, the OPID, and the activity number. This tutorial was produced by Men Hu, Sarah Patterson, and Vicki Friedman with funding from the National Institute on Aging. This ends the web tutorial using NSOC Part 1, Files. Comments and questions may be sent to nhatsdata at westat.com.